So in this video, I want to show you how you can resize an image for either web or print and the best way to save and save as your files to protect your workflow. I'm going to double click this image, which you can find in the link in the description if you want to use this one, or you can download it with the course itself. This is coming in at 33.33%. I'm going to hit Command or Control Zero just to fit it in the screen so I can optimize my real estate. And no matter what size monitor you have, whether it's a small 13-inch laptop or a big 5K 27-inch monitor, you can always use Command Zero to fit it in your screen so you get to see all of the image at once. Now, I have no idea how big this file is. The way you tell is, well, first you can look down in this left document area. You can toggle this open, and there's a lot of different things you can see, but I always like to leave it at the default to know what size my image is. This is a big file, 74 megs. It means I can't email it, I can't upload it to the web, I cannot upload it to any social media sites. It needs to be downsized. Now, if I click this, it'll give me a quick idea of how big it is based on the width, the height, and the resolution. The only other place to find that is go up to the image menu and go down to image size. This is gonna open an image size dialog box that you can grab in the banner bar and just move it wherever is most convenient for you. Now, if it's too big or too small, you can hover your cursor on the outside right corner and just drag it to whatever format is best for you. Again, it's reminding us how large the image file is, the dimensions based on pixels, is fitting it to the original size, which is totally perfect. Notice there's a chain link icon here. This is basically linking the width and the height to maintain the aspect ratio. If I click that chain link, see these lines disappear? This is what it looks like if I were to do that. Now watch what happens if I were to change this to 3000, which is about half the width. Do you see how it squished the image? It's because it lost its original aspect ratio. So you always have to leave this chain click to maintain the aspect ratio. So now if I were to change this to 3000 pixels, notice it maintained the original aspect ratio. Now, if I want to save this for web, I need to make sure this is set to pixels. If yours wasn't, click the disclosure triangle and choose it. Most likely yours was at inches if you're in the West, but there's a lot of other measurement output options here. So if I want to upload this to a website, I know that I need it to be 800 pixels wide for this particular site. And that's going to resize my height automatically. And it's doing that because my resample box is checked and it's going to interpolate the pixel information, throwing away image data that I don't need. See, it reduced it from a 74 meg file to like a one meg file. So if I click OK, it physically resized my image. If I hit Command or Control 1, that's 100%, at least on my screen, which is a big screen. So that's why it looks pretty small. But I want to save this. If I were to go up to File and Save right now, it would overwrite my original JPEG because this is still a JPEG. I haven't changed anything else but resize it. I need to remember to always choose Save As. I'm going to open a dialog box. And what I want to go and do is click to the left of that dot JPEG. And since I know this is for web, I'm going to hit underscore and 800 PX. That's my system for letting me know that I've resized this to a certain width based dimension. Since it is for web, I am going to leave the embed color profile sRGB checked because you always want sRGB for anything on the web. I'm going to click save. It's going to open up a JPEG option quality dialog box. Basically leave everything a default of maximum of 12 for now and leave all the default format options for now. Just click OK. I'm going to go back and look at this at bridge and look what it did. It added the image right beside it. And they visually look the same. If I hadn't put this underscore 800 pics, I wouldn't know which one to click on. But the great thing about Bridge is I can click on an image, like this one is selected, the original, and I can see how large the image file is. But if I click on this image, I can see, oh, this is the one I resized 800 pixels in the width because it tells me in the metadata over here. Let's go back to Photoshop. Now I want to save one for print, but I don't want to open up the original and start all over. The last thing I did was change the image size. So I can undo that last step by hitting Command or Control Z, keyboard shortcut, or I can just come up to edit and whatever the last thing I did was, it doesn't count saving as a thing, just so you know, because you never want to undo your saving. The last thing I did in Photoshop was the image size. So I can hover over here and I can see I'm back to all my original image size. So now let's go up to image, image size, and I want to make a print. So I need to choose inches. You should base all your information for printing on inches. Again, if you're in the West, let's say I want to make a four by six print. I'm just going to type six inches here. It automatically reconfigured the aspect ratio and figured out the height for me. Now, here's the thing. If I'm printing, the default resolution should be 300. I'll explain that in much more detail in later videos. But generally, anything for the web should be at 72. But again, if you're identifying the width and height in pixels, that resolution doesn't even matter. But if you're sending something for print and you're figuring up your image based on inches, resolution 100% matters and 300 is a great go-to. Leave resample checked. 
I can see my image still was shrunk in size, and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to File, Save As. Now I'm going to click to the left of the JPEG, remove the 800 pixels, and again, you'll come up with your own workflow, but I'm just going to name this 4x6. I don't want an sRGB profile. I'm going to leave it at its higher Adobe 1998, which is better for printing. Click Save, just click OK, back to Bridge, so now I have a small web one, I have the original, and then I have the four by six print. Now the reason I like this workflow of naming my files, what I've done, here's why. Let's say you haven't gotten used to Bridge yet and you don't use Lightroom. Let me close that. If I were to come up to File and Open, look what happened. If I hadn't have given myself some indication as which one I resized, like let's say I'd name, like notice how these are all the same file names, so we want them close together, but I'd name one A, B, and C. Unless I have a format of, well, A is always the original, B is always the web, and C is always a 4x6 print. If I haven't established a workflow, I wouldn't know what this was a week from now. But here I can see, because I, I can't access any metadata quickly from right here. But I can see, oh, here's the 4x6 one. That's the one I want. Anyway, I hope that helped. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>